Wonderland is an exhibition about the wonder and magic of Lewis Carroll's timeless stories and celebrates a massive history of Alice on film and television. Three years in the making, it's the biggest and most ambitious project the Australian Centre for the Moving Image has ever taken on. The Wonderland we wanted to build was one that was surprising, different and unexpected. A series of worlds within worlds within worlds that are theatrical, immersive and experiential. My name is Jessica Bram. I'm the lead curator on Wonderland, ACME's Melbourne Winter Masterpieces exhibition for 2018. This is a story about impossibility. It's a story about magic. It's a story about illusion and trickery. Alice first came to life on screen in 1903 and since then has appeared in more than 40 films and 30 television moments. Wonderland tells a really important story about special effects and film craft and the evolution of both of those things through one singular story and one emblematic character, Alice. She's bold and curious. She's adventurous and cheeky. She's smart. She's sassy. And so for Acme, presenting a really strong feminine protagonist, it felt like a really significant time in pop culture to do that. Ouch. Alice, in fact, predates cinema and she starts her life on the page and then moves into pre-cinematic optical toys. We pulled together more than 300 original objects to help us tell the story of Wonderland. For the first time ever in Australia, we get to see Sir John Tenniel's original Alice in Wonderland drawings. We have then a whole series of incredible magic lantern slides. You start to see the way in which the story will be told theatrically. We see also for the first time incredible creatures and stop motion animation puppets from two major films, Jan Schwankmeyer's 1988 Alice and Lou Boonen's Alice film, which was released in the late 1940s. What we're trying to do is offer visitors a chance to literally insert themselves into the world of Wonderland. An incredible ACME team have been dreaming, conceiving, researching, shaping, designing and plotting what this experience may be for a really long time. We have been so enormously blessed to be working with Anna Treglowen, who is our exhibition and concept designer extraordinaire. Her background in theatre gave us the most phenomenal opportunity to use her expertise and what Anna has been able to translate, probably even more amazing than we could ever have imagined. So we really wanted to encourage that, an idea which is embedded in Alice in Wonderland, which is that curiosity pays off, that things are curiouser and curiouser, and the more curious you are, the more that you'll find in the exhibition. Thousands of people can see the exhibition and each person will have a slightly different experience of it. The overall thematic of the exhibition, apart from Alice in Wonderland, is the history of filmmaking and how filmic trickery and techniques have developed. The exhibition takes us down the rabbit hole. And you land, surprisingly, in Lewis Carroll's drawing room. Our visitor services officer offers you your lost map of Wonderland. You place that down, go your complete Alice, <gasps> and then magically, this is actually my favourite thing in the entire exhibition. One of the really amazing opportunities that we've had is working with Dan Kerner and his team at Sam Pitt. 
there's a very kind of magical interactive element where if you place your map down on plinths that are scattered throughout the exhibition, it triggers very particular video content that's relative to your map. We really jumped at the opportunity that we could create something that looks like this kind of really old object that you'd found maybe in an attic somewhere. And the fact that you get to take it home is really cool. And the Lost Map of Wonderland is in so many ways, not just a kind of piece of very clever digital tech, but a piece of magic. People were so excited by the idea that they would be able to come and sit at their own Mad Hatter's tea party. We worked with digital studio Grumpy Sailor to pull off a massive challenge on this one the chance to work with cutting edge projection mapping in a first for kind of full room effects, it's massively exciting. It's not just the story of the Mad Hatter's tea party, but it's actually the story of how VFX gets created. So going from wireframes to a fully rendered image and there's a fair bit of magic and visual trickery when the tablecloths just get pulled from underneath the, the table. You don't expect that to happen. You know, every other Mad Hatter's is, is kind of set, um, but I think we've taken it in a really different direction. The table is alive um, and it really feels alive. When we brought Byron and Cornell into the project, we'd already landed on this idea that the exhibition would be a journey not just through Alice on screen, but to be doing it orally at the same time. It's kind of described as this bizarre, desolate, teapot, desert. The music has a chance to kind of weave and direct some of these feelings. A lot of these scores do reference the post-World War II kind of Hollywood stuff. Atonal meets big bombastic kind of scores. Monster Studio describe themselves as digital toy makers and we have just had the most fun time with those guys, imagining what the Queen's Croquet Ground could be. And we've been working really hard with Acme to create a place that is more part of the actual exhibition. It fits a lot within the immersiveness design of the exhibition, but here you get to participate. These are some cutouts that people are going to be using to create their own collage. They're going to be able to scan their creations and become part of the installations. Fun was a key element in the design of this experience and the idea for people to come in and be creative without being self-conscious. We'd taken visitors on this incredible journey through the history of craft and special effects, but the opportunity needed to be found to celebrate Alice's presence everywhere. And so we worked really closely with Field Carr, who's our motion graphics designer in-house at Acme, and we explode out to this 18-screen presentation to bring to life what fittingly is the most beautiful tribute. In the original story, Alice asks herself, who in the world am I? So we set out with this work to answer that question for Alice and proceeded to go down a pretty extensive search to find and seek out all the different Alice's that have appeared on screen in different media across time. We found versions of Alice from early films to television, uh, 60s psychedelic experimental films, music video representations of Alice through to K-pop and J-pop. We talk about surround sound, what we wanted to do with this work is create Surround Alice to really immerse the, the viewers in this surrounding Alice experience. We are less than a week out. Every hour something new happens in here, so it's also nerve-wracking, but the time for kind of anticipation and excitement is totally now.
it is quite seriously the biggest reward possible to be going down there into the gallery now and seeing the faces that all the time and all the investment and all the dreaming and imagining of what this exhibition could be and now to have that written on the faces of visitors is just it's i, I actually have no words which is really rare <laughs>